I like having a large vehicle. It makes me feel safer. And I like sitting up nice and high so I can see the cops sooner. <laughs> but the problem with any of these vans or SUVs or whatever is that when you go around a the corner, they roll over. I find that inconvenient. That's because they're top heavy. But then so am I. So I attached this landing gear to an old airplane I found somewhere. It's not important, really. Now, whenever I take a corner too fast, the landing gear is going to stop me from becoming airborne, see? But you know what they say. Actions speak louder than words. And I know a lot of you don't hear too well. week up at the lives this week. Lloyd Carson passed away. Yeah, that's pretty much how the rest of us felt about it, too. <laughs> Lloyd is a weird guy. He's a, one of those military nuts, always dressed for combat, you know? He was married four times. Maybe that explains it. <laughs> I always got along OK with Lloyd, as long as he'd taken his medication. <laughs> this actually was Lloyd's musket, but it's ours now. See, because uh, the bank has seized his property because of debts being owed there. But they said, any lodge member can go over and take any piece of junk they want, as long as they get it off the property. It's fantastic. Uncle Red! Uncle Red! Oh! What? Did, you, oh did, did you steal that musket from a dead guy? Shame on you! Shame on you! Harold, it's not stealing when the bank does it, OK? It's called meeting your fiduciary responsibility. <laughs> you don't even know the meaning of that word. Fiduciary? No, responsibility. <laughs> and fiduciary. Harold, all I know is the bank just wants the house and the land, and they told us we can have anything else that we find as long as we remove it from the property. Wow. I still think it's wrong. I still think Lloyd was a weird guy. You could find all sorts of dangerous stuff over there. You know, maybe you should come over, eh? Kind of pick around. You might be able to find yourself a life. <laughs> We got big trouble over at the Carson place. What? Well, the water tasted funny, so we shone a light down the well, and you'll never guess what we saw when we looked down there. Stinky Peterson? <laughs> no, a missile. What? A missile, Red, pointing straight up at us. Oh, no! Oh, no! We're all gonna die, and I've never been with a woman! <laughs> There's nothing to worry about, Harold. There's nothing dangerous going on. The missile's not any problem at all. We'll just hoist her out of there, no sweat. Red, it's a missile. Well, so what? Those things don't just go off. <laughs> and now it's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. <laughs> winner will receive a coupon for three tanning sessions at the Portis Bestest Leather Factory. <laughs> okay, cover your ears. Red, you have 30 seconds to get Ranger Gord to say this word. Fire. Fire! Yeah, all right, Ed. And go. Okay, Gord, this is something that's very hot. Oh, Connie Stevens. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, there's an expression. Where there's smoke, there's... Cheech and Chong. <laughs> Okay, okay. When you were in your tower and lightning hit your forest, what did you get? Crispy nose hairs? <laughs> okay, okay, no. This is the one thing that's destroying all of our forests. Yeah, too much urine. <laughs> Almost out of time, Red. Yeah. Okay, okay, Gord, remember when that forest was burnt to the ground up by Rock Reef Point? What happened there? Yeah, right. The uh, forest ranger fell asleep. <laughs> For a month. You know, for a while there, I thought they were going to fire him. Hey! I'm a little hungry. 
Well, there's some sandwiches in the cooler there, Winston. Uh, this smells a little weird. Uh, how old is this? I'm not sure. When's the last time we went fishing? Hey, what's the worst food you guys ever ate? Vegetables. No offense, Mike, but for me it had to be your macaroni surprise. Really? I thought you liked it. Surprise. <laughs> That's nothing. Yeah. You guys ever had prison food? No. No? Mm -mm. Well, it is disgusting. And such tiny portions. What's the worst thing you ever ate, Mike? Evidence. <laughs> I ate grubs once. Why would anyone eat grubs? Maybe they're out of crickets. <laughs> Hey, look, when you're lost in the woods for days and you haven't eaten, grubs start to look pretty darn good. Oh, okay. Well, that's just human yeah, nature. That's right, yeah. You never know what you're capable of until you're in a desperate situation. That's right. Like, many times I was forced to steal simply because people wouldn't give me their stuff. We all make choices, you know. Yep, and we do. Anthony Anthony says the quality of your choices is based on the caliber of your alternatives. Well, yeah. See, that's why they sell a lot more Ladas in Russia than they do over here. Yeah. yeah. It's supply and demand, yeah, really. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, when you're in prison, mm -hmm. the women start looking better? Yeah, so do the men, I hear. <laughs> well, Bernice married you. Huh? I mean, she must have had some pretty slim pickings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was either me or one of you guys. <laughs> It took Isaac Newton over 20 years to discover gravity. That's because he just sat around thinking. If he was an active handyman, he would have hit on gravity a lot sooner. Especially if he had one of these extension ladders. I'll tell you, an extension ladder is a dangerous thing. It's like a fat guy with tiny feet. It can tip over about a million different ways. So this time on Handyman Corner, we're going to build something a lot safer than a ladder. That's right, an escalator. Okay, uh, for starters, you want to take down your clothesline, because that's going to become part of the drive mechanism for the unit. But you're also going to need a motor. So to save money there, I suggest you take the motor out of an existing appliance. Like, say, maybe a washing machine. I mean, you already took down your clothesline. You're not going to be doing any laundry. <laughs> Okay, I got my drive unit all in place there, and uh, wired her up with uh, a couple of three-way switches so I can turn it on and off from two different places. You know, like those switches you have in your house for when your wife forgets you're still home and turns off the basement light while you're down there trying to get a sliver out of your upper thigh. So I can turn my escalator on by pushing the switch down here. And then turn it off from the top of the ladder, but I'll tell you why that's important later. <laughs> Okay, now we get to the tricky part, the collapsible steps. I'm gonna use folding chairs on that. But here again, you don't wanna go over budget. So go to the most unpopular club in your town, you know, something like Citizens Against Beer. You know, they're gonna have way more folding chairs than they need, and you can help them out with that problem. Okay, but all I need is the back and the folding seat there, so I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes and hack the legs off here. <laughs> chairs attached to my clothesline lift system now I wanted to show you I ended up using those skis that you saw earlier turned them upside down I'm using them so the chairs don't catch on the rungs because doing a handyman project is like making wieners you end up using everything <laughs> all right let's give her a dry run okay uh, we're almost done but I better pick up the pace a little bit because I want to finish this project before my medical insurance runs out <laughs> 
okay. Just add the, add the handrail on there. We're ready to go. Again, I saved myself a few dollars here. This is just a garden hose that I split and then fit it over the edge of the plywood. The hose didn't cost me anything because my neighbors are away. <laughs> Actually, even the plywood wasn't that hard to come by. <laughs> okay, that's enough talk. Time for a little upward mobility. <laughs> so remember, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. to a certain age, he's learned a thing or two. I don't mean that figuratively either. I'm saying he knows maybe one, two things tops. <laughs> now, some of you guys may think that you know more than I'm giving you credit for, but you're just mistaking useless trivia for actual knowledge. <laughs> oh, sure, I'm sure you sit there in your living room yelling out the answers to your favorite TV game show. He might even get some of them right. But I'm talking about applied wisdom for your golden years in the off chance that you actually have golden years. <laughs> See, the middle-aged mind is its kind of like a computer. It's like an old computer, it's like a, maybe a Commodore 64. <laughs> and you got peanut butter on the keys and sneeze marks all over the screen. There. <laughs> now, if you don't want that computer to be declared obsolete, I'll tell you what you got to do. You got to clear off some space on the old hard drive there. <laughs> Things like your wife's birthday, hey, that's a keeper. But knowing who wrote the theme song to McHale's Navy, well, that one can go. <laughs> Likewise, I'm sure there was a time when it was important to know who had scored the winning touchdown in the 1976 Super Bowl, how many yards he ran, the fact that he slipped in the end zone there because it was raining that day, okay? But if that stops you from remembering which wires go where when you're jump-starting a car, or that flammable and inflammable actually mean the same thing, <laughs> Well, you're probably not going to enjoy any more Super Bowls. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, lose the trivia, keep the knowledge. You may never be on Jeopardy, but you'll also never be in it. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. When there's no fog in town except for your patch, when it gives you an itch where you'd rather not scratch, Call Rothschilds now and I'll be dispatched. Light up that switchboard. Just don't light a match. <laughs> Bring that manhole cover, will you, Harold? Yeah. Okay, I think we got the missile problem all figured out. I think we should contact the U.S. Air Force. You know, from, from the Cold War. This could be one of their missiles. Well, I'm not going to be calling the U.S. Air Force. Or what I say? We've got a missile. They take that as a threat. We're in real trouble. <laughs> Contact the Canadian Air Force. Harold, it's after six. He's gone home. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hey, you have to call somebody, though. Call the bomb squad. Call the bomb squad. Just call somebody, please. Just relax, Harold, will you? Are you afraid that we don't know much about missiles? I'm afraid you don't know much about anything. <laughs> hey, look, you, you just, just be reasonable, okay? What's the worst thing that could happen? Hmm. Oh, let's see. Oh. Hmm. Oh, the missile goes off and kills everything in a 50-mile radius. No, 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 no. You don't think? No. The danger is the missile going off unexpectedly, see? So the solution is, we got to set the missile off on purpose. <laughs> yes. I feel so much better. Well, I'm... And you should. See? I figured we're going to screw the manhole cover down on top of the well, OK? And then we detonate that puppy right down inside there. We put the fish net, lay that pile out right on top of the manhole cover, see? Yeah. I figure the cover is going to absorb, I'm guessing, 95% of the energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So then the missile will get all tangled up in the fish net and it'll just flop down beside the well. Yeah. 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 And you're serious. <laughs> Dead serious. Let's hope not. <laughs> right. Walter asked me to join him in behind the lodge there and do a little work on his car. And uh, one of the first things I do when I'm working on a vehicle is kind of check the oil on. He hadn't changed his oil in a while. 
So uh, we had a case oil. I thought, yeah, this might be a good way to start. So I gave him the wrench and uh, the pan there to go down underneath. Put a little piece of plywood down there so he uh, keep his clothes a little cleaner. And uh, all he's got to do is uh, take the drain plug off the pan, and, uh, and then we'll get the old oil out, and then we'll put the new oil in. I'm sure it's the first time Walter had ever done this. He's kind of rusted on there, but he finally got that. No, you got to get the, get the pan, Walter, the pan, the pan, the pan, Walter, the pan. There you go. All right. So he got her all filled up, and he brings that out, and uh, he didn't spill too much of it, really. Not too bad. So uh, he gets up, and any of you doing your own oil changes, here's an important thing. You always got Look for the for the drain plug. A lot of times it'll drop right in, there. It is there. It'll drop right in. The, see, that's important. You go put that back on, Walter. Yeah, that goes back on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you go. And uh, we have a big can we keep for recycled oil down there. And uh, so I go down and just dump the pan in there. And I oh, want you got away from me a little bit. But, so okay, good enough. Now I'm starting to put the oil in. I put uh, I put a few quarts in at this point. And, uh, Oh. Uh, I figured it was, uh, she, you know, for a small engine, it was really holding a lot of oil, so I thought maybe I'll just check, see how we're doing, and uh, real surprise, I pulled it out, and it's just bone dry, and, uh, but I can hear, I can hear oil running, and it's running down the wood, and, and, and right down the hill, so, you know, I'm saying to Walter, like, what happened to that drain plug? And he says, no problem, I, I got it right here. I said, no, you gotta go put that in, Walter. It's gotta go in, into the pan. Okay, great, but now it, everything is so darn slippery, the grass and everything, that uh, she just virtually takes off on him, and away he goes. And I try to, I did my best to save him, but, oh boy. So he, uh, he's okay, but now I'm looking at the board, and uh, suddenly I got a great idea. Hmm, yeah. So what I did was, uh, I mounted the board on uh, kind of a display easel thing. Because uh, to me, this is an oil painting. <laughs> and uh, we had a, a big local collector, he was about 6'5", and he came over look, he was interested in it. And uh, we're having a kind of a special feature, that today you could meet the artist. And, and, and I think we were doing fine until Walter tried to shake his hand. Way to go, Walter, killed another art sale. Okay, now this may look like a romantic candlelight dinner, but it's not. For starters, I'm alone, so there's no chance for romance. We're just friends. <laughs> so why the candles? Well, that could be because the power is out. My wife's over at her mother's, and I'm eating leftover chili that I warmed up with an exhaust manifold of the possum van. <laughs> But the big problem is I gotta get up early in the morning and all I have is this electric alarm clock. Okay, here's where I get really smart. You've been waiting a while for this, haven't you? <laughs> this is a battery-powered smoke detector. And this lever closes the fireplace damper. Good night. Red. You should wear these uh, welding goggles, you know, for safety and that kind of thing. Okay. No thanks, Harold. Oh. What's with all the jumper cables? Well, Lloyd never paid his electric bill, so he got no power over there. So we're going to actually ignite the missile from Possum Lodge Mission Control right here. <laughs> Okay, Red, it looks like it's all systems go. Okay, great, great. Harold, you take this jumper cable. I want you to go to that terminal at the far end there, because I can't reach both terminals, so it takes two guys to light this candle, baby. Oh, wow! Yeah. It's like the real deal. You know where those two guys have to turn the keys at exactly the same time? <laughs> yeah. Well, we like to do everything by the book. You know that, Harold, huh? This is so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing it, but it's so cool. Hi, <laughs> and here. You do the honors, Harold. You go do the countdown, okay? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Watch yourself. Okay. Watch yourself. Watch that. Easy. Watch okay. that. Okay, easy. There. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go. Oh, all right. All right. 
right, initiating final countdown sequence to launch. Ten minutes in counting. Nine minutes and 59 seconds. Harold, just start at ten seconds while okay, you play. Okay, initiating revised final oh countdown to launch. Ten seconds. Oh. Nine. Harold, forget it. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. We have liftoff! Oh, baby. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh go back. What? I don't think the manhole cover absorbed 95% of the force. The manhole did nothing! Oh, the fish net is gonna do nothing at all, Uncle Red! Oh yeah, Harold? The fish net caught in the rafters. Just like I planned. <laughs> Meeting time. You go ahead, Harold. I'll be right down, all right? <laughs> and if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meet. Kind of hoping we can put an end to our own personal Cold War. I, I'm certainly ready to lay down my arms. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> the man's prayer. I am a man, man but I can change, change if, if I, I have to, to I guess. <laughs> okay, guys, well, we got the missile off of Lloyd's property, but we got a little repair work to do on the roof. <laughs> and the lodge itself, apparently. 